Hello, I'm Mark Reed, and today I want to discuss two of the most popular budget compressors on the market today, the ever-present Yang Hing and the GXCS2 compressor, and look at the differences and similarities that may sway you one way or the other as far as purchasing one. Okay, let's start with the intended use for each compressor, because they're different. The Yang Hing is intended to fill air guns directly or for the filling of small to medium sized tanks, such as an SCBA tank or smaller. The GXCS2 should never fill a tank. It should only fill directly to an air gun. So that's a little bit of a difference that can be important from a practical standpoint. Next, let's talk price because that's really important. These are budget compressors. That's why we're buying them. And so let's look at the Young Hing first. And I'm gonna generally use Amazon type prices. I know you can buy them in many different places and you may find better prices or worse prices in other places. But in general, the Young Hing is gonna come in a range of about $260 to about $340 or so, somewhere around that range. And there's a range typically because there are five different models of the Young Hing. There's a simple, there's a hard cover, an auto stop, a set pressure, and a digital version. And the prices vary depending on which model you buy. In general, you want to focus on the hard cover and the set pressure models. Those are the best when you look at the forums, and most people are going to recommend one of those two models. Now, for the GXCS2, generally the price can be around $290. And so comparatively, they're roughly the same. So there's not a huge wide difference. We're not talking thousands of dollars difference here. So in tens of dollars, we may have some differences depending on what models you get. If you look on Amazon, for both models, there are warranty offers for three and four years. The three year is about $35 and the four year is about $45. So that's pretty good because if you have problems with a fairly cheap compressor within that time frame, I've heard very good reports of, of uh, servicing these with new models, you know, replacements. So I think you're getting a pretty good value for your money really with both of these units. Next, let's talk convenience. And by that, I mean, what is the work involved with each of these units? And what about portability? So what about work? Let's start with the Young Hing. Okay, the Young Hing is going to be a little more involved as far as the work. Because with the Young Hing, as a water-cooled system, we have to get water. And that water is going to be in a bucket. And so you have to fill the bucket. You have to hook up the hoses to the Young Hing so that water can flow through the unit. I personally use ice with my water, so that involves getting ice. I have an ice machine, thank goodness, that I can use for each filling. And so we've got some work involved in the setup, and we also have work in maintenance. We'll get to that too. With the GXCS2, basically you just set it where you want it and plug it in and let it go. There's very little work. There's no water cooling. This is uh, an oilless unit and so you really don't have to do a whole lot except for maintenance later but in the initial setup work it's definitely going to beat the young hing and what about portability personally i consider young hing to be um, a setup that you're going to keep in your shop or in your home wherever you're filling your guns you're not going to be moving this around a lot it's it's a little more heavy uh, it's definitely more cumbersome you got more stuff to deal with and i just leave it here the GXCS2 was really built so that you could take it wherever you need to. It's, it's going to be both a home and a field type compressor. It's designed as a 12 volt unit so you can even hook it up to the battery of your car. So I think definitely portability is lighter. Um, this is the unit that's certainly more portable for sure. But convenience has its pluses and minuses and so you have to decide what's best for you. Next, let's talk power. And by power, I mean output or flow rate of air that's coming through the machine. 
And a big shout out to Bill at the Target Forge channel for giving these numbers. Highly recommend that channel. Very, very informative. But Bill has estimated that the Young Hing puts out approximately 23 to 25 liters per minute, whereas the GXCS2 is approximately five liters per minute. So certainly the Young Hing is gonna be a little more powerful. That's what allows it to be able to fill small and medium sized tanks. Next, what about maintenance? As a machine that has moving parts, it's gonna require maintenance just like your car does. And so what are the differences? Well, the Young Hing is certainly an oil-based machine. And so we're gonna to have to put oil in the machine from the beginning. We need to maintain that oil. Generally, we have to change the oil when, it, when it's necessary. And uh, there's varying opinions about that, but you can say certainly that after the first several runs and you get the machine going, you're gonna to wanna to change the oil fairly quickly. And then in general, most people are gonna say you're gonna change it about once a year, unless you start noticing soiling of the oil, especially if you're using a clear type oil that you can see. The GXCS2 uh, would be considered an oilless machine. And so we don't have to change any oil in that. So in general, the maintenance with that is gonna be easier. Both machines, because they have moving parts, because this is a high pressure system, we can expect some failures at some point. We don't know when that'll be. Uh, they're both very reliable, but in general, you might have to replace some parts. And so both would be fairly equal with that. And parts availability is something that um, I'd say was fairly equivalent in both units. And so if you need to replace, you have to do it. And so that's part of the maintenance of these. Okay, what about longevity? Well, we have a little more history with the Young Hing because it's been around a little longer than the GXCS2. And I think longevity totally depends on how you treat your machines for the most part. And so if we're gonna take great care of both of them and not exceed temperature and um, excessive pressure in the Young Hing, I think in general you can expect um, three, four, five years out of one machine. And again, you can take it out of the box and stick it on a huge tank and spend an hour trying to fill that tank. It may break immediately. You just don't want to do that to, to this machine or, or certainly this one. You'd never do that to the little one. So longevity, I think, depends on how well you treat your machine and not abusing it. You should expect a fairly good lifetime from these machines. The GXCS2, we don't know exactly because it hasn't been out long enough to have a long longevity uh, history. And so that's left to be seen. But so far, it seems to be an extremely dependable unit. I've had no problems from really either one of my machines to this point. And um, I think we can say that both are fairly reliable if you treat them well. So in closing, I hope this has been helpful. I hope I haven't muddied the water anymore, but I think it gives you a, a general comparison between the two models. They're definitely different. Uh, they're roughly the same price. And so I think you'll find a use for your personal needs with one or the other of the machines. So best of luck in your journey. Uh, this is all about having fun. So take some time, look at it, look at other people's comments. But for me, um, I actually have both of them, of course, because I tend to use them differently. And, um, and I wanted to see especially how this little one compared to the big one. I'm treating them both well. I think I'll not need any more compressors for quite a while because I'm taking care of both of them equally well. So best of luck to you. Thank you for watching and hope to see you soon again. Thank you.